Hello, I'm Evan with New Life for Old Bikes. When I was a child, my dad rode a Raleigh three-speed touring bike. It was a late 50s or early 60s. In fact, it was the first bike that I rode. This is a 1959 Denelt. Denelt is owned by Raleigh and as such it has a lot of the same components, shares a lot of the same parts and looks identical. Needless to say, I had to have it. I rode 75 miles to pick this up. I divided this project up into two videos. I did the three-speed hub as one video by itself, and then I'll do the rest of the service as a second video. About two weeks ago, before I started this project, I started soaking everything with penetrating oil. I'm trying not to break anything. Ever since getting this bike, I've been wanting to remove the mountain bike grips, the mountain bike pedals, and this aftermarket speedometer. So this is where we're going to start. Anytime you have a screw with a nut on it, try unscrewing the nut rather than using a screwdriver on the other side. A lot of times with a screwdriver, you'll just strip out that screw. We don't want to do that. The screw that holds the speedometer bracket in place is rather rusty, so unfortunately that's going to have to wait till I can find my Dremel tool and cut it off. This bicycle actually has loose bearings. When I disassembled the headset, I lost two of the bearings from the top. I counted the bearings in the bottom since they were all still there. There's a total of 29, so I've added two bearings to the top. I'm gonna clean these up and bag them so they're ready to go back in.
My preferred cleaner for the bearings and the bearing cups and cones is mineral spirits. I did a full rebuild on this Sturmy Harcher hub in a prior video. I've really been looking forward to getting rid of these pedals. If you have to replace the cotter pin, there are several dimensions you need to know. The first is the diameter. In this case, it's 9 millimeters. The next dimension you need to know is the total length. The next dimension you need to know is the cotter without the threads on the end. And the very last dimension is the bevel. I've been fighting with this cotter pin for at least a week. About two weeks ago, I started with penetrating oil and I loosened the nut. About a week ago, I started tapping on it with a pin punch and a hammer. The only thing I successfully did was damage the cotter pin. At this point, I've ordered another set of cotter pins for it, which I have, and I'm going to simply beat on it with a hammer and see if I can't remove it. If not, unfortunately, I'll have to drill this out. There is a tool that's specifically designed to take this cotter pin out. Unfortunately, I don't do enough of these to make it cost effective. Another thing is, is they've been out of production for many years and they're very hard to find.
Based on the headset, I'm going to put a magnetic dish under this just in case they turn out to be loose bearings. Which they are. I want you to notice the end on this is actually welded on. This is a factory original piece. Unfortunately, the only way to get this off of here is to cut it off. The new cable I'll be putting on has an adjustable end. For the next part of this project, I'm using some mineral spirits and a soft brush to clean out the bearing cups. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of the logo left on the chain guard, but we'll wax it up and make it look as good as possible. Once I've washed down the chrome, I'm steel wooling it with a little wax on the steel wool. Maybe I can save a little time doing this. After cleaning the frame, I've noticed that this has been touched up numerous times. In fact, they've used flat black, satin black, glossy black, a little bit of everything. So, under the circumstances, the best I can hope for at this point is just a nice clean frame. 
if I'm able to find someone who has the original style Denault logos or if someone can make them for me, then I'll do a full repaint. Let me know in the comments below if you have them or if you can make them for me. Now that I've cleaned these up, I'll be touching up the scrapes on the back fender and in a few chips on the frame. This is very odd. This particular wheel doesn't have lock nuts on it, just the cones. If I have space in the fork, when I put this back together, I'll put a set of lock nuts on it. That was nasty down in there. Definitely don't want that mixing with the new grease. You want to use a waterproof or marine grease on these bearings. At some point you're going to want to wash the bike or ride it in the rain.
that definitely needs a lock nut. That's not going to stay put. I'm using a little wax on some 4-0 steel wool. Hopefully this will streamline the procedure a little bit. When looking at your tire tread, notice if it's directional or not. Also, if you have a logo, the best place I've found to put the logo is above the valve stem. This way it's easy to find. In this case, the logo is going on the drive side of the bike. Make sure it's seated well before you pump it up to full pressure. This particular tire is flat, so we'll be changing the tube in this one as well. The front wheel can go in either direction, so it doesn't really matter which way I have the tread going. However, I'm still making sure to put the logo above the valve stem. Also, the last tire was really hard to get on, and so I warmed this one up with a heat gun. I didn't make it hot, just warmed it up a little bit. Okay, that was a whole lot better. When putting a brand new tube in the tire, go ahead and put a little bit of air in it. It's a whole lot easier to put in.
go. Right now, it's in the single digits outside, and I'll be doing nothing more than touching up this frame. When it gets warm out, would you like to see this refinished? I know a lot of people probably would like to see it with its original patina. However, it has already been touched up quite a bit. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Raleigh products have a unique race the bearings fit in, and they sit inside the bearing cup. Just make sure there's plenty of grease in that for the bearings. This is the top cap. Make sure you get all 29 bearings in there. There's all 29 bearings on the bottom. This is one of those projects that you're better served sitting down at a table doing this over a towel. Either that or having a lot of extra bearings. I got these blingy gold grips to match the gold logos on the bike. I have put a little bit of rubbing alcohol in them and they should slide right on the handlebars. Let's remove the front brake pads since we're going to replace them anyway and then we can get the front wheel on easier.
There's a flat spot on the axle. That flat spot has to line up with the flat spot in the rear dropout. On the other side, the washer has slots in it. Those have to line up with the dropout on the other side. I'm not sure whether it's easier to take out the drive side cup or just grease it and put the bearings in from this side. But since the other cup is already installed, we're going to try this first, see how well it works. In goes a thick layer of waterproof grease and then 11 bearings per side. Here we 
we go. 11 bearings on that side. Well, things are going right in. Next, we're going to put the axle in. The longer end is the drive side. With the pedal arm in the upright position, the pin goes in facing the front. The non-drive side pedal turns counterclockwise to install. Putting a little bit of grease on here so it doesn't get frozen up like the last one was. Originally, there were cable clamps holding the rear brake cable in place. Unfortunately, the cable clamps slipped and didn't hold the um, cable tight, and needless to say, all they managed to do was scratch the paint up. So I replaced them with some wire ties. The jockey wheel for the shifter cable is on the top tube of this bike, and what was happening was it was sliding around when you put tension on it. Initially, I was going to move it to the seat tube, but the diameter of this is different. So what I've done is I added a piece of double face tape and tightened it back down, and so now it's not going to move. This is the original shifter cable. 
and I want you to notice how badly cracked the cable housing is. Also the ends are kind of cracked and bending. This one is actually missing part of the end. I suspect this is actually the reason I was having trouble with the jockey wheel. There's a very limited amount of space in this shifter to slide the cable through, so we're going to remove the cable ferrule. Also, the kit with the shifter cable has a new ferrule included. With the shifter in third gear, you can now see the slot the cable slides through. I put a little bit of grease on the end of the cable to make it slide through a whole lot easier. On the shifter, you can see a groove that the cable sits down in. The first thing I'm going to do once the cable is through is slide the new cable ferrule in place. Next, I'm measuring the cable to see how much of it I need to put grease on. I'm wiping a little grease on the cable to prevent corrosion on the cable. This is not to lubricate it. Unlike the original barrel adjuster on this bike, this one is adjustable. With the shifter in third gear, make sure you take out all the slack. There's a viewing window on the nut on the back axle. If you'll notice, the end of the pin is coming through there. With the shifter in second gear, you want to loosen that up or tighten that up so that the end of the pin is even with the end of the axle. That should adjust second gear correctly. Don't get too carried away with it yet. First, before you take this out for a test drive, you're going to put some oil in the hub. Now this can take any thin oil or transmission fluid. Don't use penetrating oil and don't use grease in there. And don't worry about overfilling it. If you've put too much in, it will simply leak out around the bearings. With the shifter in first gear, the cog should spin a little bit faster than your hub. With the shifter in second gear, the cog should spin the same speed as the hub. And with the shifter in third, the cog should spin slower than the hub. 
Today is my long anticipated test ride of my 1959 Denault. We're in Dalton, Georgia, and we're going to check out some of the sights.
I hope you enjoyed my little trip around Dalton. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And don't forget, like and subscribe.